passport, and they were wanting to make sure. I think I heard somebody say they're going to build a wall. Anyway, stop. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, so those were the, so Russia. I'll do a. I'm not doing a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'll just I'll just do. I'll wiggle it in the in the middle. <laughs> but then we're gonna take a quick break, and when we get back, we're headed north to Alaska. This is Karen Duncan, your bucket list buster. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, we are headed back. That's right. We enjoyed Alaska so much. We're going back in 2020 and we want you to join us. The Best of Alaska, June 23rd through July 2nd, 2020 on the Norwegian Sun. We're leaving out of Alaska. We're going to Sitka, Juneau, Skagway, Icy Strait Point, Ketchikan, Victoria, BC, Canada, and then back to Seattle. Very decent pricing for this once-in-a-lifetime adventure. You know, the travel season in Alaska is very short. We've only got between May and September to make this happen. So, ocean views with a balcony start at $3,396 per person. An ocean view, $2,496 per person. And inside $1,806 per person, and that includes free drink package, some excursion credits, all kinds of fun stuff. All we need is a deposit of $50 per person to hold your space. Final payment is not due till February, and we want you to be on this bucket list adventure with us. Go to peakscruisestours.com forward slash Alaska 2020. And you will find the reservation form and all the additional details so that you can join us and have some fun. Come on down. Your Bucket List Buster host is here to help you make it a dream come true. And I want you to be a part of our party when we go and have a good time in Alaska in 2020. See you there. Welcome back to your Bucket List Buster. I have Mitchell Duncan here with me today, and we're talking about our bucket list trip that we just got back from, and now we are headed to Alaska after having visited Russia. And let's talk about Alaska. That's the part that you, to Alaska. That's the part you want to talk about. So, Alaska. What did you do in Alaska? What was your thought about Alaska? The Grand Trip. It, it's so pretty. It's so grand. The grandeur is just overwhelming. It really makes you feel insignificant. It makes you really humble. And it makes you... Uh, you can just appreciate the sights. Yeah. I mean, it was just... Pictures don't do it justice. Uh, yeah, because I've looked at pictures I've taken on my phone and, and they don't do anything about the majesty of what the place should. I know, I looked at some of mine too because I was looking for something to post and it was like, well, these, these kind of look gloomy, but it wasn't really gloomy while we were there. The weather was perfect to yes. me. Yes. For those of you who have been afraid to go to Alaska because of the weather, I know on my pictures I look like I'm in the Arctic North uh, and I was all bundled up. But I came from Panama, which is 85 degrees consistently all the time. So any kind of cold right now makes me cold. Um, but the weather was absolutely perfect. We we just got back. For Alaska, you couldn't almost... You, you, yeah, it was in the mid-50s, lower 60s. Yes. And uh, other than one day when we were at Icy Point Strait, um, Icy Point, yeah, Icy, po- Icy Strait Point, <laughs> Um, it was it was kind of misty and gray, but that's kind of what you want to see so also bright. in Alaska. Because that's the place had been so bright, it was almost almost too warm for what we were wearing. Because right. we had layered up, you know, expecting the worst, and now it's sixty five, and you know, you're kind of sweating and everything. Yeah, so. yeah. So the so it was absolutely beautiful. So, what did you like about Alaska? 
where do I start? I mean, first of all, it's an outdoor place. I mean, so if you're not into outdoors, it could be a little different for you. Right. But um, the glaciers, um, that was amazing. Seeing the mountains with the snow caps on them. Mm-hmm. Um, um, hiking um, yep. in, the, in the national forest and in the national parks. And just to, for your listeners out there, there are all type of trails and uh, difficulties that they rate them. But most of them are a two mile trail that you can use a wheelchair on so they're accessible for everybody. Right. Um, once you start getting beyond the two mile mark, then it become a little rougher. And so whatever skill level you are, they have something there for you. Right. Uh, me being, um, uh, how do you say it? I don't want to say old, mature. <laughs> seasoned. <laughs> seasoned. Um, we chose not to go on too, on anything that was too rough uh, and too long because of the time. I didn't want to get lost in the, in the outback of Alaska and, and, and miss my dinner. Right. <laughs> Back on the cruise ship. Right. But I just, it was really wonderful being in the outdoors, fresh air, eagles everywhere. Yes. Seeing the whales, seeing, you know. The seals, seals playing, you know, the dolphins. Right. You know, I actually had got a chance to see a couple salmon when we were in catch a can mm-hmm. right before we left. So uh, it was a wonderful experience. It and, was a wonderful experience. And I cannot wait to get back. And we're going back. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. But yeah, we um, that's what I kind of liked. I, I kind of liked the outdoors and I was afraid of I was afraid of the cold, but it tended to be a non-issue because first of all, we were walking around and so you tend to heat up a little bit anyway. And we were dressed appropriately. We would have been addressed appropriately um, for most of what it would have come. We did go uh, invest in some um, portable, or packable um, down jackets and some rain shells so that if if it rained, we still would get a chance to be outside and and go see the things that we wanted to see. And so we made sure that we um, ate at local places. I know your food is included on a ship. Everybody says that, and most people think, you know, that's one of the reasons you take a cruise. But one of the things that Mitchell and I like to do because we believe in sustainable tourism is to make sure that we support the local um, stores, the local restaurants, the local economy, the local economy because the, the cruise ships own a lot of what goes on when you take a cruise with the excursions and the destination management companies that run those those tours and even some of the shops. And so it's we make sure that we find something local that we can support. So at most of the ports, we found a little breakfast spot. Right. Um, and you ask, we get off the, the cruise ship. Right. Walk around and ask, you know, some people, you know, you know, where's a good place for breakfast? And they were more than willing to kind of share, yes. you know, their opinions. And once you ask two or three to come up with somebody keeps going to the same place, we right. said, okay. That's got to be the one. Exactly. And in the first place we stopped when we were in Seward, they had the best pancakes. Oh, man. And, and, you know, the food was good on the ship. I'm not going to really complain about it. But sometimes you just want... You, you want to taste what the locals are eating or you're, you've been craving something really good. We live in Panama, so there are some things that we can't get here. So we were looking to fill that gap as well. And, and Mitchell has been craving good pancakes for I don't know how long. And so, I used to talk about IHOP. I, I, I would love to have one right now. Or a Waffle House. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... But yeah, so we um, found the first place. We found this little place that had these fantastic pancakes, and I think David had salmon um, Benedict. Sa- salmon Benedict. You know, because salmon, of course, is big in in Alaska. And so after that, we just started looking for breakfast spots everywhere we went. We just get off the ship as early as they would let us off, and um, beat the, the, rest beat of the, the crowd, crowd right. And then kind of walk around and look at the local shops and see what if there was something we wanted to buy. And then we'd meet up with the boys 
with Edwin working on the ship, he couldn't always get off at the same time. And I think at the first stop, he couldn't get off at all as Seward. But we would meet up with them, and that's when we would go hiking. So let's talk about one of the things that we found out while we were there, that Alaska is legal for cannabis, and they have dispensaries. Mitchell and I have never been and to a dispensary. And we just had to try it out to go see, you know, what this was about. Yeah, because we left the States a year ago just as things were starting to be legalized in the United States. So there are dispensaries in the United States, but we've never been to and one. We lived in Texas, so you know. Yeah, that, Texas is not going to do it anyway. It, it's municipal. So so we went to um, a couple of the dispensaries to see, and I want you to know that it is overwhelming. It's kind of like going to the Costco's of weed. Well, we know in old school as weed, but it's more than just <laughs> weed. They have... They got names in this stuff. They have names and to... the potency degrees. And yeah, and, and if you want to be happy or if you want to be sleepy or, you know, then they've got oils and waxes and, I mean, I'm going to do a whole show, in fact, on cannabis tourism coming up in the next few weeks because... That's an industry that's growing, and I'm a neophyte. I want to learn more about it, first of all, but there's so many people out there that are traveling specifically for this reason. They're going to Colorado. They're going now to Alaska, um, and it was just fun meeting some of the owners of these places and hearing the process that they had to go through Ooh, to open up the, their stores. Oh, about the, the hoops. Stuff. That they had to jump through, yes. and the and the 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 um, the things that you have to do when you get there. So you know they have to make sure they ID everyone first of all, and you're on camera when they ID you. So if they don't do that for everybody walking in there, they'll lose their license. But that was that that made for a very interesting trip as well because no, they asked me, and I, I'm laughing. I guess you're over 21. Well, I got. Sewer highlights in my beard. <laughs> and, and your hair. And my hair. And I'm saying, yeah, of course I am. But they still had to see my ID. Right. They had to see his ID. So that was fun. You know, it's fun for the young people to witness their, at one time, conservative parents um, going into a shop like this and being overwhelmed by the fact that... Um, <laughs> that there was just this all this stuff. I mean, I've never seen some of these things. Uh, so we walked out with a pack of papers and something. We didn't have any papers, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I just brought out my my credit card. But it, uh, yeah, it was fun though. It was it, it was fun. I recommend it. Almost. It, <laughs> I recommend it. You know, if 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 you partake. Or even if you don't partake, you gotta, on a, go. you gotta go just to just to see it and experience it, just because it's a part of Alaska tourism right now. I mean, it's kind of like going to the museum or going to um, see the whales. <laughs> but anyway, so that was that was one of the things that we did. So it was really cool. So, um, why was Alaska on your list? The great outdoors. I mean, that's kind of what I wanted to say. I mm -hmm. wanted to experience that. Um, you mentioned earlier that I had spent two summers working in Yellowstone National Park, and that kind of opened my eyes up to some of the wonders that nature has. Right. Um, so it's always kind of one to, to see Alaska. My only disappointment, I would have liked to see the Nile. Mm. You know, but that'll mm -hmm. be something, you know. We go back for back, You know, and incorporate into the next trip. But, because I can't only imagine what Denali would look like just seeing the rest of the yeah. part of Alaska. So yeah. it does have to be overwhelming. Yeah, there's a whole lot that we didn't get to do. And I can see us going back more than once, probably, to to right. experience the talked about doing a B, you know. Yeah, Airbnb, a yeah. For a month or so in one of those places. It's just that nice. Yeah. Yeah, and for us to say that about a place where you have to wear coats is really a big deal because we're we wear as little as possible on an everyday basis. So to dress, have to wear clothes every day yeah. would be a big <laughs> would be a big deal. We're not nudists, but we can talk about that on another show too. 
So, um, what's something exciting that happened? Oh, the bear scare. We had a bear scare.